there is something deeply wrong in the data economy where we live today. How many of you could kind of agree with this statement? Hands up. There are some people that still believe that the current data economy is all okay, but I would say that 90%. What about you there in the internet? I guess somebody's. Yeah, I, ca I see hands there in the internet. Hi for you also. Uh, you can also uh, find my slides uh, from Twitter because I so much love all the big giants that uh, make these great services for us in this internet age and they suck all our personal data. Uh, but they do give us good services like I have Google Slides here and from Twitter you find my Google Slides and today I haven't been in Facebook. Anyways, uh, so I'm researcher from Aalto University and I'm also in open knowledge uh, and then I work for mydata.org, global movement, which is not yet established as a legal entity, but it uh, contains big group of people uh, that are working to the same goal of uh, seeing the better future for personal data. And today, I think quite many of the keynote speakers have underlined here the fact that technology doesn't solve as such any problems, it might actually create new problems. Uh, uh, it was uh, one of the keynotes in the morning who said that technology tends to uh, amplify whatever we are doing, whether it's good or bad, you can uh, use the technology for good, uh, good or bad. And uh, we should collectively come together uh, to make, if there is something wrong, uh, to come together and try to fix those things and be still open-minded that whenever we create new technology it might somehow weirdly turn and become just the business as usual. So that's why in my data movement we have the tagline of making, make it happen, make it right. Uh, so my data means that we want to give individuals uh, control over their own data so that it's, it would not be controlled only by the organizations. But uh, in, when we do that, we don't want to end up in the situation where it just uh, amplifies the current situation when you uh, click on yes, 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 I agree, yes, I agree, this and that. I just bought new television and I agree that the television can listen to me or uh, at least uh, uh, see what kind of programs I'm, I'm seeing. The television didn't go on before I put that yes, I agree without reading the terms of service. So uh, we don't want that personal data becomes very fluidly uh, flowing all over the internet just by making it even more easier to agree without reading on anything. And on the other hand, whoever wants to really control things, that's tedious job. Uh, who wants to uh, uh, really read all the terms of service and make it uh, under your own control? So we need some sort of uh, better way uh, for that. And that's what my data is uh, all about. So personal data is all over the places and it has huge value. So this is estimated that in EU countries only uh, by 2020, the digital identity and personal data related services might, might be valued up to 1 trillion euros. And currently uh, it's really hard for organizations to create uh, uh, personal data uh, or aggregate personal data from different places. If I want to make a good service, I am a startup from Finland or Sweden, or maybe I'm the government agency that want to make some sort of more personalized service for the citizens, it's not easy. It's not legally and technically easy to uh, connect data from different sources, but it's even harder for us, the individuals, to uh, understand where our, our data is flowing. So, uh, yes, we know that uh, there are these big ecosystems like Google or Apple that want to make everything nicely. They are becoming banks and they are becoming in, in insurance companies and they are becoming uh, part of our household. They are having thermostats and everything. So connecting nicely in one package under one ecosystem. But in my data, we think that we don't want to rely on such platforms, but we should have our own platform we as a people, so I could be the connection point 
Uh, and that could actually uh, solve some of the problems uh, that uh, currently I don't have any clue where my data is flowing. And it's really actually hard for the companies to get data. I've been speaking with some retail chains, big ones in Finland, and they say that there's a line of uh, startups knocking on their door. We have this super idea. Uh, we want to make the service that uh, helps people to uh, make better, healthier choices in their grocery shopping. We just need access to the personal data of people's grocery shopping. And the retail chain, they are like, ah, uh, come on. It's really big liability for us. We cannot just open the APIs of personal data. This is an uh, open data forum. Everybody knows that personal data is, is not part of open data. Somebody said in the beginning, maybe it was Catherine, that you have to always underline that we, I'm not speaking about open data. But uh, is data as such the same kind of APIs uh, uh, work there? And the retail chain cannot open uh, the data of, uh, for any startup. So, but what about if the startup could, could come and knock my door instead of the door of the retail chain? Hello, Antti Yogi Poikola. Would, be so, would you be so kind and uh, uh, offer access to your uh, grocery shopping data in if you get this service that you can follow where you actually spend your money? Then it's up to me uh, to really make the decision whether this is a good offering or not. And uh, currently the data value chain is very closed and that's that's uh, i'm coming from the open data movement there everybody knows that uh, uh, maybe the most innovative ideas for the usage of data are not born in the same place where the data is born so this very same thing applies to the uh, personal data for example banks i have uh, here this card i don't show the number <laughs> you can't see it from the video uh, i use it everywhere i buy uh, uh, all my consumption habits are uh, trackable uh, wh where i use my card and banks are having this data but what do they do with this they have super innovative uh, processes and they can monthly give me list of transactions what I have bought. So they don't really use this data, not for my benefit. Uh, and there are cool services that uh, uh, make it easier to follow, follow where you use your money, uh, but it's hard. Uh, now there is coming the new regulation that actually forces the banks to open the APIs, but uh, for years it has been the battle that uh, nobody else can get access to that data and it's not used to any of my benefits, only to the benefits of the bank. What about if we can open this ecosystem so that the same data that is born in one place, it flows through me. I decide, I'm the control point. Okay, I want this my banking data to be used in this financial dashboard application. I, I could uh, allow my uh, movement data from my watch to be used here and there. So uh, really becoming the control point of your own data. And this idea, uh, what uh, I call my data here, uh, we started to work with uh, the uh, Finnish Minister of Transportation and Communication on this like a couple of years ago. It went to the government agenda. Now there is an alliance of big companies and, and pro, uh, projects and uh, pilot pro projects coming up in Finland. But it was invented in many places uh, in the same time. So like open data, it was not born in one single place. There are uh, initiatives in, in uh, France, in Spain, in Italy, in UK. Uh, etc. And uh, European uh, Commission invited some of us to Brussels 2015 uh, to say, well, what is this new thing about human-centric personal data? And this was really the first aha moment that we saw as a community, each other, that there are many people thinking along the same lines. And that was two years ago, and now the community is coming together and we managed to do this declaration of uh, my data principles. You can find it online on mydata.org. And uh, there are three shifts that should happen. Uh, so, first of all, my data is human-centered approach for personal data management. And the first shift is that uh, it's not enough to have uh, formal rights. Uh, as you know, there is the uh, uh, PSI directive for open data. In the same way, there is uh, directives for uh, g getting your own personal data. And uh, to continue the traditional, I will show you a slide with some paper. 
So this is the paper that I got when I executed my rights of having my personal data from my telco operator. So uh, it, they, I actually had this email conversation back and forth uh, with them and tried to get it in even in PDF format. But uh, what they could do is they charge me 10 euros on my uh, uh, phone bill and uh, mailed me this thick pi pile of paper. So it's not enough to have a legal right to get your uh, information. You have to have uh, also more practical me means. And actually, this is changing now. Uh, on uh, There is coming a new data protection regulation in Europe, which says there is Article 20. If you don't want to read 200 pages of this uh, legal jargon, at least uh, try to find this Article 20. It's right to data portability. And it says that. Uh, I, as a da data subject, I have right to get my uh, data in structured, commonly used, and machine-readable format. So that's something really new. That right didn't exist there before, and it's coming into full uh, uh, May 25th next year. So there is a two years uh, transition period that will end on May 25th. And on May 26th, I hope that there will be couple of hundreds of uh, citizens of European Union sending some data requests uh, to companies that are completely terrified because they don't have a clue on how to react on these kind of requests. But we want to help the companies, of course, not to push it and not to be unproductive, uh, but really to show that there is value of my personal data in other circumstances. Uh, second shift is that we want to move from the data protection to data empowerment. It means that uh, it's uh, very important that I'm protected. I'm an uh, individual and there are big companies and corporations that are powerful. They can uh, misuse my data if I'm not protected. But uh, the other axis of that same question is that what about if I could actually set the agenda? What to do with my data? Now, uh, it's not enough that I'm only protected and somebody else decides what to do and it's either OK or not OK. But I want to decide what to do with my data. So um, this is kind of the axis if you think that the current uh, giants, they are uh, pushing, uh, making very fluid data uh, usage, reusage, Googles and Facebooks and so on. Uh, they are focusing on data usage. OK, and the GDPR and the regulation that's uh, focusing on the uh, protection of individuals. And as it should be in these uh, charts of four, uh, two axes, there is on the top left, right, there is the best option. It's my data. So uh, it's really uh, bringing, keeping the privacy part, keeping the protection and uh, getting the utilization of data through individuals. So if I, uh, people ask me uh, uh, if I want to uh, give access to my data, then it's up to me and there, uh, it allows more usage of data. And the third one is to uh, move from closed to open ecosystems. Uh, and that means uh, basically that now the four or five big companies are really really dominating the markets and it's hard to get there anybody uh, if you don't have the machinery to collect personal data and uh, at least in Finland we don't have any big companies they are all like uh, tiny uh, companies after Nokia went tiny again so uh, no they are actually quite big and good anyways uh, uh, there is no such a big dominant companies in Finland and it's really hard to start o offering services in this digital world if you don't have huge user base. So if uh, also more niche companies can ask me the permission to get my data, that allows more balanced uh, economy and, and more competitive environment. So uh, there is the international movement. Uh, many companies are building these solutions already. Uh, they are called PIMS, Personal Information Management Services. They are all over the world, but Europe is definitely leading the way now because of the new regulation. And these are so-called My Data Hubs. There is one in Sweden uh, coming up, and these are really new one. But basically, this is my message here. Going back to that, we need to come together to create the chains. So uh, everybody who is uh, here in Sweden interested in uh, to take these personal data issues for forward, I uh, invite you to talk with me after, after this discussion and uh, 
then of course come to my data 2018 this is uh, non-paid commercial but it's really the coolest uh, event of uh, next year in helsinki finland in the end of august thank you everybody Thank you, Antti. Does anybody have uh, a question for Antti? There's a question over here. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Josephine. Uh, I was just wondering when, we, when you speak about personal data and also that you work with open data, and I was thinking, do you think that personal data could be a driver for uh, understanding open data, other than is if people got their own data, do you think they would be more interested in, in other types of data? Yes, I think those all go quite nicely together. And uh, we, my data, it, some people think that it's very individualistic, uh, only to speak about one person, but there is lots of collective data and there are collective benefits. And one way of me using my data is actually uh, donating some part of it, for example, research purpose purposes or something like that so uh, it's actually hard to make this uh, decision whether some data is uh, individual uh, if there is like the grocery shopping maybe it's the uh, family head that does the grocery shopping for the whole family and uh, so forth so this uh, what is uh, private or personal and what is collective and and uh, there is there was the chart of from o ODI from uh, from the different uh, shades of data so uh, I look at very there is coming for example regulation that uh, now uh, European Commission is suggesting free flow of data that's they say that this is not go going to this is only for non personal data and they just uh, put the line there but I think in reality it's really hard to put that kind of lines and especially all, all who has been actually doing data things in the uh, organizations they know that there are the same systems and there is personal and non-personal and open and non-open data so it's all, all there together it's just treated differently in legislation and we should see it holistically I don't know if it answered your question Uh, yes, uh, Christopher Sjöholm here. Uh, I'm wondering, th this concept is really challenging the core of, of the big players uh, in, in the internet because th the data they have on us, as you said, and, and previous I said before. How, how have you had any um, reactions from, from the big players uh, that actually and, and also a lot of new startups really, they, they want to, they know that the data is their thing and they're trying to get into there and then you are sharing that that model um, yes uh, last time when i was having this similar kind of presentation in in estonia i got email from somebody from the audience from microsoft uh, saying that our logo was in in bad uh, position there and we are not such a bad players and we have privacy policies and we are working on that and uh, i engaged in the conversation with her and said that uh, I, I think it's not really the players, uh, uh, they play with the rules that are actually now in the data economy. It's not like uh, Googles and Facebooks as such, they, they would want to do uh, bad things for the society, but uh, there is, this is the rules that they are playing, and if the rules are changing, I'm quite uh, sure that uh, at least some part of the currently big players are managing to actually adapt and change their strategy. Maybe, maybe there will be a couple of that will actually die out, but uh, we have seen it over history that many uh, companies, including the Nokia that I mentioned, they started by doing some rubber boots and suddenly they did mobile phones and now, now they do something else. So I think the players as such, uh, that's not the problem, but the problem is the rules that are, you need to, play with these rules that we have now, otherwise you don't have business. And we have to be able to change the rules, not to so much point with fingers on the different players, although I'm doing it and <laughs> it just happens. I, I'm not the only one who has done it here on the stage today. 